Good afternoon, everybody. Mondays are starting to get to be my favorite day of the week because of Maker Mondays. And while I am chit-chatting before we get started, if you want to just grab your sketchbook or your visual journal or um, paper and a pencil and um, take some visual notes, you're gonna have a ton of fun. Also, in the side panel today is handout from Debbie and it's fabulous. So before you log off, download the handout. I think you can do it anytime during the webinar, but make sure to download the handout. Really great information. We're always, we always like to be active. So if you have any questions, um, type it in the question box. And before our session's over, we'll do a little Q&A. But with that, I wish all of you could have tuned in to the NAEA pre-conference awards that happened on Saturday. I went to the um, Retired Art Educator Association, it, or that's that region or whatever, I'm not sure what they call it, but that was the group and they were giving out the National Art Educator Emeritus Award of the Year and they gave it to Debbie West. And she was so gracious and she, her, her PowerPoint was breathtaking. I, it gave me goosebumps. I almost started ugly crying. I had to turn my camera off for a minute because it just is the epitome of what an art teacher is and what they do. And today she still is teaching, but she also mentors and she coaches and she does PD and workshops and all of that. And today she is here to help all of us fill our buckets. Cause we know that every day you are filling students buckets. And sometimes you get to the end of the day, the end of the week, and you're wiped. So Debbie's going to share how to um, keep your bucket filled. And with that, I will turn it over to Debbie West. She is, she has become my friend, and she is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met, and a fantastic art educator, and now such a world changer. Thank you for being here, Debbie. Wow, Chris. Um, thank you. Can y'all see me? Can you hear me? Are we good? Are we on? <laughs> Is the mic on? Um, sounds like the Golden Globes last night. That's hilarious. Um, but thank you, seriously, so much for having me. I love NASCO Art Education. I love you. Um, and I love art teachers. I mean, my passion really is in and about art teachers. So just a little bit of information about who I am. I'm Debbie West. I was an art educator um, in Gwinnett County, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta for uh, 25 years. Um, so I taught elementary and then I moved to high school and actually did my student teaching in Philadelphia at the middle school level and worked in an adjudicated school one year in Philly. So, um, and now that I'm out of the classroom, I continue to add years into that because I continue to teach. Um, I'm just not in a classroom. I'm teaching in our local, local art league. I teach at our local art center. Um, I teach with the Art of Education University. Um, I do some of their studio graduate courses. Um, I have an educational consulting company. Uh, you know, I had 26 student teachers throughout my career, loved them all. And so I'm still wanting to stay into that kind of mentoring philosophy and then I can help others and, um, you know, get school districts to understand the importance of art because come on guys, it's Youth Art Month, it's March 1st. Woo -woo, let me get a woo down there. Um, so what better time for us to talk about how we can fill our buckets with, um, with all the things that we need to consider as we continue on this beautiful journey of being art educators. So um, with no further ado, I want everybody to get their journals. I want you to take out your Sharpie pen or your drawing pen and just draw a quick bucket. So I just did a real quick little contour bucket here and I've got a stick sticking out of there. And I'm probably gonna add some more sticks as I continue to reflect on what we're gonna talk about today. So maybe I'll even end up with, um, a B-U-C-K-E-T, a bucket of ideas here, because that's actually how I created your handout today, okay? It's how are you filling up your art teacher and bucket? 
And I got a little contour outline here if you guys want to take a look at something. I know sometimes it's easier to look at something than to come up with it in your head. And then the second page, what I've done and how I've created this is I've created a list bucket. And each of these are an idea for us to consider and think about as we continue through the rest of the school year and the rest of our careers. And then linked to each of these are, as I have articles. Okay, So I've written 75 articles for the Art of Education University. And then there's some of my colleagues who have also written some fabulous articles. I threw some of those in there that really kind of matched up what each of these um, little themes were about in this overarching theme of how to fill the bucket. So we'll start with the B, B. And that is really, I'm very passionate about this one, belong to your state art associations and or the National Art Association. I cannot reiterate that enough. Um, this is when I was the past, actually president-elect of the GAEA, the Georgia Art Education Association, um, my job was to be the membership chair. And I kept thinking, okay, what is this gonna look like? How's this gonna work? And I thought, you know, it's really simple. Everybody likes pizza and everybody likes beer, right? So you go out, you get a big pizza filled with all the different toppings and you get a pitcher of beer, right? You do that three times, I don't know, in a month, in a, in a, in a quarter, you have just paid for your state dues to belong to your state art association. So the flyer that I created had a pizza on it, so three pizzas with everything and a couple pictures of beer, you two can belong to your state art association. And here's what happens when you belong to your state art association. You create a network of like-minded, passionate art teachers that you can share and springboard ideas off of. Um, when I came up with hashtag together we art better, I did it because I was sitting back reflecting on how unbelievably valuable those friendships and that networking has been to me and has, I mean, ultimately made me the art teacher that I am and was because we would share ideas. We would learn from each other. So I can't, I think the first thing to do to fill your bucket is to surround yourself with amazing art teachers. So I have in here, Youth Art Month is a great way to do it. So here's the deal. When you belong to your state art association, most of you guys have a state Youth Art Month or YAM coordinator. So I know right now, many of you are thinking, oh my gosh, okay, so it's, it's Youth Art Month. And that's just one more thing for me to do. I'm teaching. I'm barely holding on right now. I got hybrid. I got my kids online. I got my kids in class. I'm trying to be safe. I got a family. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to have for dinner. How can I bring yam into the mix? And guys, it can be really simple. It can just be that you take a couple student artworks and you hang them in the hall with a yam sign. Or if you're not in school, do a little virtual show or just take some, some pictures of your students in process or finished artworks and add hashtag yam 2021 on it and send that to your state coordinator and they're going to compile that into a book that's going to get your kids and your program published and it's going to showcase how unbelievably important art is for our future for our current kiddos right so getting involved in yam collaborating is hugely important the friends that you make the idea sharing and then i share like i said a couple ideas in here of how you can do that so now i can talk about b forever but we're going to move on because we do have a, a time um, schedule here. We're going to move on to the you. First of all, you matter. <laughs> Did you hear me? You matter. But with that you, I want you to think about how you can utilize your community and how you can share your student successes. And I know, again, that right now it's a little bit tricky because many of you can't go out and artify the community, right? My students were painting the bathrooms at the school to help motivate and inspire the teachers of the school to put on a little happy and remember what they're there for. Um, we would go out into the community and do murals. We would do you know, local shows at the coffee shop. And most of the stuff we did was to raise money for charities of my children, of my students' choices. So I like to call that um, hashtag art with purpose, right? What is the purpose of creating the art? So that our students can get their talents and skills out there and be world changers really, right? Um, so I throw some ideas out there, but you can also do all this online using social media, right? Um, putting it on all of these. I mean, there's so many social media platforms now that you can use. And when you do that, right, when you're utilizing um, your community, guess what you're doing? You're also going back to that B and you're networking, right? You're belonging to a group where you're sharing. And then with that art with purpose, together we are arting better. 
Are you with me? Are you seeing a little theme here? Um, so I think that's really, really important um, to consider how to do that. And again, I know that you're all like, okay, I don't have time for that. It can be as simple as taking a picture and putting it on social media, just on your phone. You know, with these phones now, we have the ability to do things that back in the day when I first started in the 90s and the 2000s, we weren't able to do it that simply. Um, so now you really can, which is great. Our next is the C. That's why we're working right now. Hopefully I'm talking and not working, but in our journals, right? Because I want us to always remember to create. We got into this job of being art teachers because we are creative divergent thinkers. It is inherently within us that we need to make art. So are you making art? That's the question. I feel like um, uh, sometimes I talk to some of my art teacher peeps and they're like, you know, I want to be, but I can't. And then you look at some other folks on Facebook and they're like, oh my gosh, they're working in their journals every night and they're almost making you feel guilty. So remember, Comparison is a thief of joy. Thank you, Teddy Roosevelt, for that one. So it's not about comparing. It's about what's going to work for you. Sometimes for me, it is as simple as just thinking about breathing and putting my breaths into my journal. So let's say right now that I just wanted to practice some breathing. And I'm actually doing a whole series of these right now. So I'm... See what I'm doing here? I'm just breathing. And through those breaths, I'm creating these lovely contour lines. By the way, I'm not a fan of a straight line ever. And even when I use a ruler, I can't make a straight line. So there's that. But these beautiful breath lines. And we document these breath lines. And it reminds us that just in those lines, we're an artist, right? We're beginning to tell a story of what it means to be alive. So being an artist, making your mark, um, and I like to call that hashtag art teacher life, <laughs> right? Because then we're art teachers, we're always creating. Um, I belong to our local art league and our local art center. I'm actually on the board with the art league. So I'm an exhibiting artist and I take some of the work that you'll see, some of my work behind me, and I put that into the gallery every month. We do a, a rotating show. So that kind of really keeps me um, thinking about that. But some months I forget because I'm just busy working on artist trading cards or working in the journal. So I never beat myself up if I don't get as much art as I want to make. And, and by the way, here's one for you. On those days when you just are like, there's no way, like I, I can't, I can't even wrap my head around it. Think about when you're getting up in the morning and you're putting your outfits together. I'm pretty sure you're being an artist, right? You're thinking about your color palette. You're thinking about textures. You're thinking about lines and shapes. So have fun in the morning and be like, artist in the house, right? I get my magic paintbrush here. Woo, woo. Artist in the house getting dressed right now, okay? So be that artist um, in everything that you do. Be artful and lead that artful life and create. Um, we're going to move on to the K, right? Here's our, okay, keep it in the screen there. <laughs> um, and that is keeping a documentation of what you do. Okay, I know this is, some of you are going to go, it's one more thing, but I'm telling you, maybe one of the smartest things I ever did was listening to a professor of mine back in the day from Moore College of Art and Design in Philly. Shout out to Moore, where I got my teaching degree. Um, and then University of South Carolina is where I got my undergrad, and UGA is where I got my master's degree, so I love all my schools. And I remember at Moore College of Art and Design, I had this wonderful professor. Um, she was great. Oh, gosh, I loved her. Um, and she literally looked at me, Carol, one day, and she goes, everything that you do from this point out, put it in your Vita, in your curriculum Vita, so that you have it and you know, and not, not trying to get a job in three years going, now, what did I do September of 2016? It's always going to be right there. And I took her word for that and did it. And then I went one extra step. And what I did is I started, I'm going to grab one of my journals up here. I started to um, keep a scrapbook every year that I taught of my student successes, my successes, the things that I learned. And thank you, Lord, that I did, because I now have, I kid you not, look how thick this thing is. I have um, 24 of these scrapbooks from every year of teaching. So this was taking us back to 2004, 2005. Yeah, I'm not old, I'm just seasoned, <laughs> okay? And here you can see kind of what I did here, right? So you got 
this is what the walls look like this is what my teaching curriculum look like there's a picture of my daughter back when she was a little girl this is our first day of school i've got notes in here i've got images in here i've got flowers that my husband sent me i've got lesson plan ideas i'm telling you guys i've got like three books from these scrapbooks here because it's student artwork it's students working and this was the old days right when we actually used a camera and printed the pictures out um, but you can still do that, right? Through, um, I don't know, the Groove book where I get my pictures monthly that you can have done. It's $5. If you want more information about that, call me. Um, I'll seriously walk you through it. It's simple. But all these pictures in here are documenting a year of a theme-based curriculum. And now when I taught elementary, my last year at the elementary school, I was at 1300 and 22 students. Just saying that kind of exhausts me. So I did theme based. So this year was alpha art, right? And then here's 2005, 2006. I just pulled this one out too. I didn't pull any more of them out, but this one was Earth. It's got art. So again, open it up. There's the empty halls. There's me thinking, what am I going to do this year? And then bam, the walls begin to get covered up in student artwork and these great lessons emerge of students' work. And the cool thing about some of these books is too, um, I moved to the high school and so my elementary kiddos became my high schoolers and a lot of them would go, oh my god, can I see that book when I was in second grade or third grade? And now these kids have all grown graduated from college so again we got old somehow um but you know what seasoned seasoned is the better one so um i like to call the keeping the sketchbooks the dyd the document your doings and when you hold on to that and you're having some of those moments where you're like oh is it worth it is it worth all the work that i do i'm exhausted you can go back to those sketchbooks and be like it is so absolutely worth it because you can look at the thousands of kiddos whose lives you've touched, the artworks that you've created, the, the, the uh, collaborating that you've done with classroom teachers and in your community, and it will literally fill you with joy. It's almost like keeping a gratitude journal. A friend of mine, um, Jenna Kelly, had talked about the importance of keeping a gratitude journal. And when every night you write in your journal, just maybe one or two things that you're very grateful for that day, even the bad days, when you're reflecting on that it pulls joy from you and so it causes literally chemical reactions that that bring you joy and you go to bed happy that's what these scrap, sketch scrapbooks and these um journals do for me and then if you don't want to keep a scrapbook do a blog right keep it all on a blog keep it all on a website just so you're documenting it how about pinterest put this stuff on pinterest and be like here's a year in the life of art teacher me right so keeping that documentation matters. Okay, we're gonna move on. E, okay, this one's probably not my favorite um, as I sit here with 30 extra pounds on me, um, but you know what? It's exercise. So when I say exercise, I'm not necessarily talking about, oh my gosh, I've gotta get to the gym today, because again, that's one more thing. And for some of you that I'm jealous of, your part of your daily routine is that you get up and you exercise, because without it, you can't go on. I, I'm working towards that. <laughs> One day I will be that person. But right now I'm not, right? So I have to really think about what is it that I'm gonna exercise today? Is it just gonna be that I'm gonna do 10 minutes of some yoga stretching? And by the way, I've dealt with some health issues in my shoulders. So the fact that I can do this to my shoulders right now is really good, feeling it, right? Um, is it that I'm just gonna go out maybe and walk? Maybe I'm gonna walk, I don't know, around my condo unit here. Um, I don't really have time, even without teaching, to get myself to a gym, but there are other things that I can do. I like silent disco beach walking, which is great. So next time you come to Hilton Head, come see me, and um, we'll go silent disco beach walking because it's super fun and you don't even realize that you're working out. But exercising can be stretching, and exercising can also be exercising the, the, the heart, right? That little H-E and the big A-R-T. So when we exercise the heart, we are reflecting, right? We are thinking about the ways in which we are breathing, the way in which we are paying it forward, the way in which we are um, sharing our student successes, the way in which we are building each other up in our community, um, our art teacher family community. So notice again, that these all are somewhat scaffold and they play off of each other. So exercising is about exercising your ability to be that artist and art teacher and pay it forward. And then we're gonna move down here to T. And T of course I was thinking was gonna be teacher because what did teachers need to do? We need to keep teaching and keep learning, be lifelong learners. But then I thought, no, I'm going to change that and turn it into time. Because time is something, you know, time and money, <laughs> right? The two things we don't have enough of. Um, so take time out for you. 
And for me, my passion is art education. So I really had a hard time back in the day. My husband and I have been together for 31 years, but I had to always remind him, um, I love my job. So my hobbies are art education, where he's all like, I'm a golfer, I'm a surfer, I am a go-kart driver. Yeah, he went through that phase a couple years ago, whatever. Um, but I am an artist and an art teacher. So my hobby was GAEA. It was NAEA. Now it's SEAEA, South Carolina Art Association. It's um, working in the community as an art teacher. It is sharing art with purpose ideas. It's painting rocks. Right now we're building um, the houses to do that. You know how they do the little libraries and you share books? We are now doing that. We're doing five of them on Hilton Head that are art boxes. So we're going to be sharing mini art. You can take some art, you can leave some art. So it's almost like um, artist trading cards on the go. So my husband doesn't get it, but you guys get it because it's what fuels us, right? It's why we wake up in the morning going, oh my gosh, it's another day. I get to teach kids art. Because remember, we don't teach art. We teach kids. We teach people. We use art as the discipline and the vehicle to teach them and to teach them well. So take time for yourself, guys. And that means, um, I don't know, I just got the Calm app. The AOE, you got everyone the Calm app this year for a Christmas present. It was the greatest gift ever. And every morning, I do a 10-minute meditation through the Calm app. And I'm now... I get the exercise thing, right? Because it's almost like it's becoming a hobby. Like I'm just like in it. And I'm like, yeah, what are we going to talk about today? And some days I'm actually sitting and I'm a little ADD. So some days I'm actually brushing my teeth, washing my face and, and getting ready, which is my own way of meditating. Um, traveling, guys, that's time for you. Traveling matters. Now, when I travel, I'm always bringing in new ideas that I can bring back to my students. Um, but then family time is important, right? I mean, we're all about the movies. We're all about games. Um, I'm all about going out and listening to music. That kind of soothes my soul too. Um, and then reflecting, always reflecting. And sometimes reflecting in, in the bathtub, you know, take baths for yourself, to jump in a, in a hot tub. Um, because I wasn't going to say this, but now I'm going to. I love baths. But remember how I mentioned that I gained 30 pounds? Um, I'm not even kidding. I think my bathtub is shrinking. I'm not understanding what's happening, but that might be too, TMI. So anyway, I've got some uh, lists some articles in here about ways that you can take care of yourself and continue to exercise. And then guys, I want you to remember, this is important right here. Can you see that? Remember that you have the most important job in the school. And I know from reading all these Facebook and Instagram posts that you don't always feel that way. And you sometimes feel like you're not respected like you need to be. I'm here to tell you something. You know, I know, and our kiddos know that your job is the most important. And if we didn't realize it pre-COVID, we totally are realizing it now. Our students need a safe place to go. They need a safe place to be able to tell their visual stories. You need to honor and cherish that you have created that safe space for these kids, right? That is so important. So I actually have an article in here about the top 10 reasons why the art room is the most important room in the school. So use that, especially it's Youth Art Month, right? This is our time to be advocates. YAM is actually the, the nation's number one art advocacy tool. It's our time to scream and yell it from the, the rooftops. So use that article and share that with your administrators, share that with the teachers around you, share it with your students so that they're like, oh my gosh, art is literally everything. It is all around us. And without artists, without these divergent creative thinkers, we don't have anything, not to mention that the majority of cities and towns economy comes from and stems from the arts, right? So a lot of stuff that we don't always think about. It's not that frivolous extra. Um, and then one more thing, because I'm not really paying attention to time because I'm just really talking to you right now from my heart. Uh, but I wanted to mention um, another article that I wrote a while back. And it's to think about the art materials that we use, almost like metaphors as to what we do, right? And now is a really good time to consider that. So, you know, when we get to school and now we're getting to school and getting the materials out for our students. And then we're also getting materials out that we're putting into kits so our students can come and get. So. Oh my gosh, like there's not enough hours in the day, guys. I bow to you. My heart is just so full of, of unbelievable um, pride for what you all are enduring and what you're all doing right now because you're changing lives 
to the nth degree. You are an essential worker um, right now in a big way. Um, so I want you to think about the materials, right? And some of you have heard me talk about this before. I talk about it often when I do some of my speeches. Um, but like, for example, let's say it's a clay day, okay? And you're passing out clay to everyone, um, which is awesome. And so as you're passing out the clay, Think about it for a minute. Instead of just like, oh my gosh, I got to get all this clay, slabs cut, and I got to get it passed out, I got to get the burlap passed out, because burlap works, works best, so it doesn't stick to the desk, by the way. Um, but how am I going to do all this? Stop for a minute. And as you're pulling on this clay, think about this as being the minds of the children right now that you're blessed to teach, right? And that you're molding their minds to be better humans in our society through this art class. Um, how about the pencil, right? You're looking through the pencils, and you're like, oh my gosh, why are the kids biting off the erasers? Why are they all broken? Stop, rethink, because attitude is everything. I like to call it patitude, positive attitude. And as you're sharpening these pencils, you're thinking, wow, I want to be like a pencil. I never want to be dull. I always want to stay sharp for my students. Um, I want to be able to value, to, you know, how a pencil creates value, to create value in my students' lives and have them realize how important their marks and their visual stories are. I want them to consider, um, I want you to consider, I don't know, maybe glue, right? And as you're filling the glue bottles or looking at the glue sticks going, seriously, 12 of them don't have lids? Seriously! <laughs> that instead of that, you're going, wow, you know what? It's my job to make sure that the learning sticks. How am I gonna do that today? Right. So it's just taking another look at our art materials that are in front of, of us and says we're sitting here on this NASCO Art Education Maker Monday thinking about what NASCO does for us. They're the ones who give us the materials so that we can teach our children well. Right. I mean, how beautiful. But look at those materials maybe in a different light. Right. Um, and I think it could change the day for you a little bit. Right. It's just one more thing to put in the bucket where you're like, man, am I lucky because who doesn't love open up the crayons and smelling the crayons and all those supplies and then just thinking about them in a little bit of a different way and then finally um another thing that i like to talk about because i'm on this whole acronym roll right now you know with bucket is um a lot of times we need to be resuscitated right we need to be reminded we need to wake up and remember why we do what we do so i wrote an article about this i've given some speeches about this as well because i like to call it cpr right and cpr people go oh cpr that's like when you're like you know pushing on somebody's heart and to get it to Eat again. Exactly. I want you to push on your heart, H-E, little A-R-T, big, and think about the ways that you can resuscitate your love for teaching again. And that C and that P and that R are all about commitment and passion and reflection. So when you are committed, which you all are, because you're here today, I mean, you've been on Zoom, many of you, and now you're here right now. It's crazy. And for you, those of you that aren't live, hopefully you're going to get on later and you're going to be like, wow, you know what? I am a committed art teacher because I wanted to figure out ways that I could keep my bucket full, right? Um, and so you're committed. And with that commitment comes passion. You're passionate teachers um, because you are realizing and hopefully shaking your head as I'm sharing this bucket list with you. You're going, yeah, yeah, these are doable things, right? She's not telling me anything that I don't kind of already know. I just need to rethink how I can do some of these things through the day. And then reflective. And guys, that's sometimes the key is reflecting on the day at the end of the day and really going, what worked, what didn't work, what do I want to change tomorrow? Because, you know, every day is a brand new day. Every day is a brand new time and moment for us to breathe, let it out, and assess. What kind of teacher do we want to be today? What kind of person do we want to be today so that we can continue to pay it forward? So, um, and again, as I mentioned, with all of these little let letters here, I have articles that you can go in and check out, even some of this stuff right here. And I want you to remember that there are so many reasons to celebrate you every single day, to celebrate um, what you do and what you bring to the future of this world every single day um so keep that bucket full take care of you and remember together we aren't better i also shared some of my contact information so stay in touch with me um because i want to learn from you and you can learn from me and we'll keep learning together <laughs>
that was phenomenal. And you are so nailed it when you said we keep learning from each other because you never stop learning. Like, I mean, you are the first person, like I've been at conferences with you where you've been the keynote. I've been at conferences with you where we just participate. And I have seen you like just shout out a new idea, like, oh my gosh, I didn't know how to do this. And just like, this is great. And you make this connection. I love that about you. Debbie, I don't know if you remember this, but I love that you shouted out Youth Art Month because it is March 1st and March is the month we celebrate Youth Art Month. But Youth Art Month has now become like a thing. Like it's not just a month, it is an actual event. It is a phenomenon. And it is so because of all of the incredible art teachers and students out there that's doing it. And it's like no other art show because it's all inclusive. You know, it starts within the classroom and everybody does it and every student can participate. And then you have your show at school where you hang up everything. I mean, lots of times teachers are hanging numerous pieces up of students, not just one. And then from there, it usually goes to like a regional show. And then it does, you know, you got to start having some parameters because, you know, there's no museums out there large enough to fill all of your art. And then when it goes on to a state, it also pairs down. But it's not always the best that goes on to the state. I have seen, I've seen many times where students with special needs art went on to a state show mm -hmm. because the art was just fabulous for that student. And I love that. I love any time I've attended a Youth Art Month show, families that are so proud and <laughs> sometimes, you know, this little kindergartner is in a suit and it's just <laughs> so epic. But I yeah. remember um, when I first joined the Council for Art Education um, Board of Directors and, and as a member, I was the recent, I was the president and I was new at it and I was just nervous and stuff, but I, I was so overwhelmed by what teachers were doing that I knew that I couldn't fail because you all were doing all the work. And I remember standing up and sharing and talking and I sat back down and all of a sudden this person comes over to me and whispers in my ear, I love you. I'm going to start ordering from NASCO. And I looked and it was Debbie West. And I was like, oh my God, it's Debbie West. She's the fullest teacher ever. And I was so excited. My real point to that though, is a connection was made. And then from that, I have connected people with Debbie. Debbie has connected people to me. And that's, that's what like, a huge part of what she does and what we all do. And, you, you know, not everybody can be a Debbie West or any, you know, there's many phenomenal art teacher influencers out there that are sort of those sort of faces that like to be out in front of people and, and they, they enjoy that. Not everybody does, does not mean that you're not as great as those teachers are. Mm -hmm. And Debbie is the first one who will say like, hey, you know what, you don't have to be large and in charge because you're valuable doing what you do. And I love that about you. Um, question, oh, how can we get a copy of her handouts? So on your side panel of your screen, there should be a, like a little control panel that has handouts and questions and chat. Click on yeah. the handouts and then you should be able to download that. Mm -hmm. If you can't, Email me, it's kbaki at, enask, or at nascoeducation.com. Um, I'll put it in the chat. And if you can, if for some reason your computer won't let you download it, I'll get it to you. Not a problem at all. We'll make sure to get them. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say, if they wanted to just contact me too, I don't, am I on yet? If they wanted to contact me through social media, I can just send it to you. It's just a PDF um, and I'm happy to send it out to everybody and just, you know, share it too. 
because um, there's some great, great information in there. Um, and I tried to get it all on one page and it took three pages, so sorry. <laughs> um, but Chris, I love that you mentioned Youth Art Month because I think that either people from, from my over the you know, past 30 years of being in this, in this, this wonderful world of profession of, of art education-ness, um, art teacher in this, people are either very confused about Youth Art Month, like what does it mean? And especially some high school teachers because they hear Youth Art Month and they think it's for kids, but it's really not. It was actually designed in 1961 through the Council for Art Education in conjunction with the NAEA. And the goal was to use it as a, as a na national advocacy tool. I actually wrote my master's thesis. I did a, a national study about how Youth Art Month is working in all the different states and met some of my dearest friends just doing that study, right? And going to NAEA for Youth Art Month. So when I became the Youth Art Month coordinator for the state of Georgia, it was actually the beginning of me getting into leadership without even realizing I was getting into leadership. I did not become an art teacher to become a leader. I became an art teacher to teach kids. But then I realized through the GAEA, there were some great things that we could do. And one of them was being a Youth Art Month coordinator, which now I'm doing all the Youth Art Month activities here on the island because I know how to do it, right? Um, and so if you have any questions about how to do it or ideas, send them my way or literally look into your state association because I, I want to say that the majority of the states have a Youth Art Month coordinator. And if you find that your state doesn't have a Youth Art Month coordinator and you're looking for one more thing to do, perhaps you could be the Youth Art Month coordinator for your state and then reach out to folks, uh, seasoned folks, the old folks who have done it, and then we'll share with you, you know, some of the tried and trick trips tried and true tricks that work to get teachers excited about this, right? Absolutely. I, I would encourage Youth Art Month all day long. The, mm -hmm. I can't even tell you how many benefits you as a teacher will get. And, mm -hmm. and it does just enhance your program. And the community part of it too is Mm -hmm. phenomenal it really right. is and even for those can I say this real quick those teachers that right now are seriously like I I'm, I'm feeling you guys I get it we're tired we're exhausted right now so for those of you that are thinking it's just one more thing start really really small again look at it as a way to promote your program um I've always said that who is it that we're trying to um advocate to Right. If we're advocating to the legislators, let's you during Youth Art Month, I used to invite the legislators into my art room. I used to invite the mayor, you know, invite them all in, roll up your sleeves, make some art with us. Right. You can't do that right now in COVID world. Right. In most places. So so what can you do to promote your program? through this activity, right? Call up one of the local newspapers and be like, hey, this is what we're doing right now. And by the way, when you're sharing the pictures of your students' artwork, share images of the process. You know, we're all privy to the processes that go into creating the art that's on the walls in the museums. I think it's our job to advocate to the parents. Okay, those are our number one folks. Those are our VIPs, right? Our very important parents. Because they're the ones that are voting in the administration and the school boards and the legislators. So teaching the parents who sometimes never had an art education, so they don't understand the value of it. So using your knowledge, your skill, your experience, your passion, your commitment to inspire them, then they get to see the show and show some images, like I said, of the in process and then have the kids talk about it because they can become the docents, but they're also the artists that can walk the community through the show and talk about what it took for them to come up with this art. I mean, that's the kind of platform that you can look at Youth Art Month. It's, it's this giant, huge umbrella with hundreds of little strands underneath it, right? Absolutely. Um, and all those drops on those uh, on the umbrella fills your bucket. Joan yeah. um, is with us today who's a Youth Art Month coordinator and won um, uh, an award of excellence um, nice. recently from Virginia. I'm pretty oh, sure congratulations. I'm- Congratulations. Right. All of a sudden my brain is feeling like I'm not getting the state right. But yeah, yeah so go, and she just said, thank you so much for sharing because it's hard to get all that information out. It's hard for people to know. And, yeah. and the more we talk about it and the more we share it, the better for everyone. Absolutely. On a different note, um, Wendy is asking social media slash scrapbook idea. 
I like this idea where two things work together. What are other multiplier ideas might you offer and brainstorm with us? Oh, as far as like scrapbooking, I'm assuming, or, or, or documenting your doings. Um, one, I, like I said, I mentioned Pinterest really quick. Um, I remember um, a couple of years ago, I was at a conference and we had this great presenter shame on me for not remembering the name and um she was like i need you guys to go into pinterest and let's use pinterest as a learning tool instead of a let me steal other people's lesson ideas tool right because we're not stealing or springboarding right people um so we used it to document a day in the life what does your perfect day look like and you're going in in your research what does it look like when i wake up in the morning what does it look like during the day what does it look like at the end of the day and we created our own little board of what it looks like on a perfect day so what is of taking that idea you did what does it look like in the month of march in my classroom in my life right and then you begin taking pictures or borrowing pictures too that you can use right like i got this idea from this art teacher and this is how i springboarded off of it and this is what my kids ended up creating because you got to give credit where credit's due right don't steal you know make sure that you're giving credit to the people that came up with it and then having all of these images in of the process of your art room walls, of you standing, you know, on the ladder with tape hanging stuff, whatever, um, in this online platform. And I'm saying Pinterest because there's probably so many other ways to do it out there. I mean, think of all these very famous bloggers now, like there's so many amazing art teachers that got known because of their blogs and their blogs are amazing. I just, I don't have time to write that much, but I'm so inspired by them and the time that they have to do that. So for me, it was almost like an artful thing for me at night to reflect and put these scrapbooks together. So I didn't wait till the end of the year. Um, but sometimes what I would do, like if things were really crazy busy, I would just have a box and I'd put pictures or notes from kids or notes from an administrator or I don't know, sometimes I'd even take, you know, the little notes that the kids would give you and just throw them in the box. And then each month take out the papers and then start to glue them down or tape them down. Right. So that that month is now done. Turn the page or that unit of lesson is done. So, um, you know, some of you might go, God, that'd be a great idea to maybe even think about using my visual journal to do that. So I'm journaling some of my thoughts and then putting some of these images in there. Um, I have found uh, I think I have that in my sketchbook here. That keeping an envelope, did I keep it in this one? Maybe not. No, keeping an envelope on the last page of your visual journal is a great idea because when you keep a envelope there, you have the ability to just find, like, if you're looking through a magazine and you find something or a picture that you want to print off your phone, you just, just can put it right in there and then it's ready to be added to the journal, right? So that's never a bad idea to consider that as I'm sitting here looking. These are some of my experimental pages here, right? Um, here's one, you know, who am I, right? So and now I'm just doing lots of reflecting in the journal because I'm not teaching every day. So I don't know if I answered your question completely because I kind of did a little bit of this, but there's so, you know, there's social media aspects to do that with. And there's the old school way. And you can do the old school way and then take pictures of that then put those pictures onto the, um, into the internet and onto the social media platforms. I always worry a little bit about the social media thing because things, you know, it's fabulous how memories pop up. Like I love, love, love that. But sometimes something that you know you documented, for whatever reason, that one doesn't pop up. You know, like they get to control what pops up and what doesn't, you know, so. Yeah. You know, but well, that might maybe, also be yeah, just because maybe I'm, use all of them. I know a lot of people like Instagram. This is when I guess I am a little old because I'm trying really hard to like Instagram, <laughs> but I'm so like the Twitter, Facebook girl, um, you know, and Pinterest. But but Instagram's great. But you know, like I couldn't even put the link of this into Instagram. So it's really just, I guess, more about the pictures. So Instagram, I know a lot of teachers use Instagram as a means for like their AP students to do some of their documenting and some of their portfolio building through that platform. And um, what's the other one that's really great? Um, there's uh, um, Artsonia. Artsonia is a great one. I used to use Artsonia with my elementary kiddos. And then when I moved to high school, I was like, what a great platform for our students to build their portfolios on. So, you know, that was kind of cool too. Yeah. If you have any other questions, 
don't hesitate to um, ask. We've we've got some time here. One of the things I wanted to ask you about Debbie too, in terms of sketchbooks, you even um, you even went as far to partner with some other teachers in the high school so that the sketchbooks became cross curricular. Can you talk a little bit about those sketchbooks? Yeah, I think I actually put that article in there. We did, it was actually Brooke, Brooke um, Richards idea. She's an awesome art teacher in Gwinnett County. We had such a great family of art teachers in Gwinnett. Um, and she actually had this idea sort of jumping off of the tetrad, you know, at um, Sam Peck and then our journal junkies, you know, Dave um, Muller and, um, and Eric um, Scott do in that they're, they're teaching these journal classes. They're talking about the art of the visual journal every day, right? But then the tetrad is the um, combining them. So like I have a little journal right now. I didn't pull it out, but that I'm working in. And then at the NAEA con conference, when it's live, <laughs> I give that back to Sam. And then he works on it the next year. And then he gives it back to me the following year. And he does that literally, guys, with like hundreds of people. So you've got these journals that are going across literally the world and being worked on so like I can see somebody's artwork and thoughtfully and respectfully add my marks around it so Brooke took that idea and did that in our county and so what was happening is our students had a book that the North Gwinnett book and so the our book would go to let's say her school Duluth High School and her students would work on some of my students pages in the meantime we might have a book from Collins Hill um, High School and work on that and then we would just merge them around I think we have like I think we had like 12 or 13 schools that were participating. And then the teachers had their own little journals that we would pass around. So we were being inspired from each other. We were learning from each other. And we were um, doing the same with our kids, right? They had the opportunity to see other people's artwork and see how they were they responded to their artwork. And it was really funny. Like they could not, the kids could not wait for those books to get back. Because then they would be like, oh my gosh, look what they did to my backbone. And I'm like, well, then change it change it back right like when and they you know this take pictures like that's the beautiful thing about cell phones now is kids can take pictures all the time of the art that they've created um but that was a really cool um way to network and and use that networking as a teaching tool right that is that reminds me too of sandy darden did a uh, maker monday on visual journaling and so she also shared that with her students, instead of making them all visual, do visual journaling, and part of that is, you know, purchasing the sketchbook for every single student, she gave everybody an opportunity to have the experience by having a traveling journal for a class. So you oh, could great. check out the journal and then create a page in the journal and then bring it back, and somebody else could, and slowly lots more had the courage to do it because they yeah. saw somebody else doing it and it was almost like some peer teaching you know what i mean because they're oh, like absolutely. oh i just did this and i did this and there were like you know they were only a small set of rules um you did nice. get a um woot, 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 Gwinnett shout out from um kristen from burkmar high school hey girl i miss you <laughs> so um yes, hey, it's, because the sense of community within the art education market is unbelievable. And honestly, it even extends into um, the people that serve you. So I, we talked about Youth Art Month, and I serve on the Council for Art Education board um, with somebody from School Specialty and folks from Dick Flick and, you know, Amico and Scott. Um, and it's amazing that even though these ceramic um, vendors are um, competitors, and, and certainly I'm competitive with my other, you know, the other catalogs out there, we all come together for Youth Art Month. And I love that. I mean, in a teaching world, it's not necessarily a competitive thing. And like you said, um, comparison robs you of your joy, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was just gonna say, comparison is a thief of joy, and I think um, I think um, somebody just wrote an article about this too in the Art of That. It was really good, and it's you know, be be you. There's a lot of very um, uh, 
awesome art teachers that are very loud out there and they're awesome they're amazing they're doing great things but don't ever feel like you're not doing great things because you have a different way of going about that and like i mentioned i had 26 students teachers and i was that teacher that was a little crazy um like i literally would be up on the tables walking around because i could always get a better view so i would just run around on top of the tables so i could see the in process work that was happening and then pick them up so kids could see it from a different view and some of my student teachers are like oh yeah oh yeah no <laughs> that is not for me right and i told them day one i don't want you to do to remotely be me i want you to completely be you uh, this works for me right i mean uh, this is the way that I've been doing it. I want you to learn. I want you to go out and see what other teachers are doing. I want you to absolutely be you. And there's no art teachers out there that are bad, just FYI. If you are using art to teach kids, you're a rock star. And, and we are in this family together. On that rock star note, you talked about doing some community art. And that was another great question from Wendy. Tell tell a few things like she talks about doing like snowflakes um to put on food barrels um with messages for the food barrels and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. tell us some of the things that you have done because it is a plethora of community oh, yeah. service type things it's a lot okay so first of all if you do not have an art club or a national art honor society i highly urge you to get one right and basically what the nahs is is art club i just had one of my students at the art of education university who lives in maine we were talking about it she actually called me and she's like okay let's chat about this right because she's really excited about doing it and had never thought about doing it so basically i use that group of kids to do the majority of the community work so um here's a great lesson that we've done um and this is not necessarily in the community it with a memory project right the memory project is where you can art adopt orphans from third world countries and your students then have the opportunity to honor their identity to the art of portraiture so you're teaching portraiture lesson you're teaching mixed media lessons you're teaching color mixing right in in skin colors whatever and you're creating artwork for someone else to change their lives and anyone can do that that's a great at home lesson that folks can do right now another great one is um the, the kindness rocks project right so you're taking rocks and you're painting the rocks and you're leaving them in the community or you're building a kindness rocks garden at your school um one of the things that we did that was really fun and i'll never forget it i walked into the bathroom it was one of those days you know one of those days <laughs> and i walked in and I kind of slammed the door and I sat down and I'm sitting there in this little bathroom again, too much information. And it's just these blank white walls. And I'm like, there's so much we can do here. I'm staring at four giant white canvases. Why don't we have the kids do murals in these bathrooms to improve staff morale? So I walked back in the room. I'm like, any NHSers in here? Four of them came running over. I'm like, follow me. I took them into the faculty bathroom. They're like, um, are we allowed? I'm like, you are. I said, what do you see? They were like, Blank canvases, blank walls. Yes, you have the ability to artify them. Make us feel good when we walk in here pissed. Make us, pun intended, make us leave so that we're happy, right? And so on the door, my Kimberly was like, oh, you open the door to the, your students' futures, right? And then we were doing some sparkle work and some impasto painting. So some of my kids are like, what if we put impasto right on the wall and had some of these images popping off like 3D reliefs? I'm like, ah! yes it was just amazing teaching moment it was one of those things that wasn't always planned guys it doesn't always have to be planned right and it took off it changed the the way in which so many teachers a saw the art class and b realized how important that they were because they were like some of them would go out of their way so they could come down and go to the bathroom in the art teacher hallway so that spread and then other people like so it's a place where other people start to hear about it so we have a local um a local place rainbow village and it's for homeless kids and so they contacted us and said we're getting ready to have an auction can your students work with our young students and do a mentoring program to build a six foot mural that we can auction off so we did home and what does home look like it was so beautiful and that's in the article that one of the articles that i sent you all this stuff is by the way guys anything you are getting here and you can't get it uh, written down fast enough it's all in these articles um and they auctioned it off like eighteen thousand dollars and then they got to keep it there so um there's so much good that you can do you know contacting some of the local coffee shops and especially right now 
when things are slowly starting to, you know, open up a little bit more, you know, we can stay safe. We can wear our masks. Oh, speaking of masks, um, I should have one with me. But another way that I'm making my art is I'm, I've made six different series of art masks. So I'm having my art actually put onto masks. Why not have your students do that, right? That's another great idea. We can't mask our excitement for art ed. <laughs> and one of them is actually hashtag art teacher life. So, um, and another one is yes, yes, you're right. Hashtag together we art better. So um, I think there's so oh, yeah, many. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But there's so many ways to, to do that. So Wendy, that's a great question. And again, reach out to me. And, and, and as I'm sitting here holding in my hand, don't forget to wear your crowns. <laughs> um, uh, this is one of my elementary lessons that I taught not too long ago, um, and we were studying um, uh, European royalty. Actually, I've got two samples here, right, because we're saving paper, um, one crown at a time. But think about the different hats that you wear as art educators. This is another article in there. And what hat do you need to wear each day? Because sometimes wearing all of them in a day can be really exhausting, and then you're not taking care of you. And if you're not taking care of you, you can't be the best you can to take care of your family and your students. So I'd say every day you wear your crown because you're an art teacher, goddess or god or king or queen. You are art teacher royalty. And um, if you don't believe me, just ask your students because they need you. They really need you. That is so, so true. And I do feel like you are somewhat royalty in our art education world. So Debbie, thank you so much for being here. I have a few announcements before we leave and I'll tell you, you're always as close as an email away from Debbie West because I would be more than happy to always connect you. She's pretty easy to find on uh, Facebook and in the art education market. So, um, mark her down as a forever resource because clearly she's a plethora of them. Thank you so, so much. Love so you guys. Thank next, you, Chris. Um, is if, if you are going to NAEA, if you've signed up for the conference, today's the last day that you can sign up for the conference. So if you haven't and you can still sign up, but um, make sure to visit us at our virtual booth. It's going to be weird. It for sure is. It's going to be kind of like this, but we have a lot of exciting stuff going on for you to come in and talk about with us. And so we'd love to see you come visit us. I think it's as easy as going to NASCO and hitting a click. So you don't even have to like go down an escalator, turn down the hall, walk up the stairs, go in, 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 just click on us and we're there. So I'm excited about that. Next week, we have um, two amazing teachers from Florida who are going to talk about art on a cart life. And, and that might be a lot of people's reality when they go back to school, just trying to keep students contained in one room and being safe and that kind of stuff. So if you are facing that, if you live with it, if you're just interested in it, no doubt they're going to share a ton of information there. So I'm really excited to have Sunny and Deborah from Florida with their art on a cart life. After that, Bob Reeker is going to share about the um, online art teacher K-12 um, service group. That's really, really exciting stuff. That is on the 15th. And the 22nd, we're going to take a break from Maker Monday, and we're starting a brand new series called Book Chat. And so I've got um, James Haywood Rowling Jr.'s book right there, Growing Up Ugly. I read it and loved it. I just loved how it gives us an opportunity to ask ask ourselves who we are and what we have to offer. And so I would recommend um, reading it. it. doesn't take very long. If I can read it fast, anybody can read it fast. And um, you can barely see, but right above me is a little stack of books. We bought 20 of them and we draw on a weekly basis for uh, some free books going out to teachers who sign up for that, uh, that 
chat, that book chat. And Jenny Calvitis is the other customer engagement manager who's social emotional learning and career readiness. She's going to be with to um, talk. It's just going to be a it's going to be a fun session. So that's coming up. All that with about 30 seconds left. So I, Debbie, once again, I can't thank you enough. Please keep being you and keep um, keep mentoring us because we need you in our life. And I'm a firm believer in together we are better. So thank you very much for that. Everybody thank keep staying safe. We want you all back in school soon. So keep being healthy, stay well and keep teaching art.